Remember yesterday when I released my video about the Williams' livery and told you that they hadn't released full pictures of the real car? Well, just as I released that video, Williams actually went to Silverstone and made a shakedown event where they showed us the real FW44. And just as I was looking at those pictures, some pictures of the real Alfa Romeo actually also popped up as they were also doing their shakedown event somewhere else. So today let's actually take a look at both and their technical details. Let's do this. Ok, so actually starting by taking a look at the picture of the Williams FW44 in the pits, we can already see a lot of interesting things. So firstly and foremost, their front wing is very different to the other teams' front wings, so whereas other teams actually try to generate most of the downforce of the front wing in this region right here, Williams seems to try and generate most of their downforce in this region right here. And what this means to me is that Unlike other teams that were trying to generate most of the downforce like this and had a wing with a lower section right here in order to allow a cleaner airflow to the Venturi tunnels, Williams is actually trying to load this inboard part of the front wing and generate downforce throughout the whole, the whole of the front wing. And what this tells me is that they were actually needing more downforce than other teams in order to balance the aerodynamics of their car. And another very interesting detail in the Williams side pods is that if you look closely, you can actually see the side impact structure. So this is a structure that every single car is mandated to have in order to avoid impacts coming from the side so if another car hits you from this direction this is a structure that will absorb that impact and there are two of them so one is here and the other should be about here you can see that Williams actually needed such a big opening for your cooling inlet that they actually needed to put the side impact structure right here and this is a very peculiar design we haven't seen this in any of the 2022 cars so far and we haven't seen this in the 2021 cars, so I'm wondering why have they felt the need to put this here. Okay, but now by looking at the side picture of the Williams, and it's a pretty low resolution picture, I'm sorry for that, but that's what they released. And you can see here, there's a little bulge in the Williams at the side, and this is the other side impact structure. So, as you can see, the top side impact structure is actually inside of the side pod and the bottom is this little bulge right here. And you might be wondering why are we not seeing this kind of bulges in other cars? And the answer is that actually most of other teams are actually putting this side impact structure, the lower element, a lot downwards and it's being absorbed by the floor. So it means that this, the lower side impact structure in most other cars is inside of the floor, but not in the Williams. But Williams also have a very, very interesting side pod design. So unlike most of the other concepts that we have seen for 2022, they don't seem to have a big undercut. So the, the bottom section of the side pod, there's not really a big opening right here for the air to go through. Instead, they're trying to use the same downwash approach as AlphaTauri did, but without the undercut. So what this means is that the airflow is going to hit the side pod right here, then it's going to go down and join with the floor airflow, which is, and this is going to be a very, very high speed airflow. And what this will mean is that once this flow joins here with the diffuser, it will actually try to pull the air from the diffuser, which will increase the diffuser's efficiency. So this is one of the two approaches that I expect to see in the 2022 car. So for teams that are not running that big undercut, just like Williams, I expect to see this kind of downwash approach in which the goal is to pull the air from the diffuser. Now, you can see that the Williams doesn't have any cooling louvers and that instead the way that they are trying to use this is that the air comes in through the side pods in the front and then comes out of this very, very narrow Coke bottle region. And this would be a very interesting car to see from the top. But that's how the Williams is trying to keep their cars cool and that's the way that they are trying to have their aerodynamic approach. So instead of having the cooling louvers and instead of having that big undercut just like Aston Martin, they have the car set up like this with the big downwash effect right here. And I think that this will be very interesting for 2022 seeing the different cars and their different approaches. Okay, but that's it for my first look at the Williams FW44. Again, we don't have a lot of pictures, so I'm going to go right through to the Alpha. Romeo. Okay, so here it is. So the Alfa Romeo was actually caught doing a shakedown event that was unscheduled or at least it was not planned. Now there's a lot of interesting things about the Alfa Romeo. So unlike the Haas, and I know you cannot see it very clearly in these pictures because of their camo livery, but this thing you see right here are actually cooling louvers. So the Alfa Romeo, just like the Alfa Dustin Martin, is trying to create that big undercut right here. And you can see the contrast of this and the Williams in the same video because 
whereas the Williams is trying to create an airflow that's going to speed up and then go down and push the air and pull the air from the diffuser, the Alfa Romeo is trying to accelerate the air in this bottom section right here of the Coke bottle to generate the same effect and to pull the air from the diffuser in order to seal the floor. Now they are doing this in a very different way to other teams because they have these cooling louvers right here. So this will mean that the airflow on the top of this part will be actually much slower. And since the airflow will be slower on the top and, and faster in the bottom, this will actually mean that the side pod itself will become kind of like a wing to generate a little bit of downforce. And this when combined with the floor downforce generated by the Venturi tunnels will generate a lot of downforce around the center of the car, which is where you want the downforce to be for increased car stability. Now, unlike the AlphaTauri, you can see that in these pictures there's not any rake on this car, so this is a pretty much as flat a car as you can get. And again, this makes sense because you really want this floor to be sealed and having a flat car without any opening is the best way to ensure that the air doesn't escape through the sides and that it stays on those Venturi tunnels that you can see right here. So the design of the Venturi tunnel is something like this and the floor is here. So the way in which you allow less air to escape from these parts right here is to have the, the car as close to the floor as possible and to have the car as straight as possible and that is what we are seeing here with the Alfa Romeo. Now in this picture right here you can see something that is very interesting and that I haven't actually explored in any of these launch videos and that is the beam wing. So the beam wing is a smaller version of the rear wing that's in the bottom of the rear wing end plates and this is also a secondary wing that will generate a lot of downforce and this wing will definitely benefit directly from this undercut effect because the air that goes through this undercut section right here will definitely feed the beam wing right away. So this will be a section that will benefit a lot from that accelerated air. So the air from the undercut will not only pull the air from the diffuser to increase its efficiency, it will also generate a lot of downforce via the beam wing. And this is one of the ways that teams are going through the fact that the rear wings of 2022 cars are going to generate a lot less downforce than in 2021. Now there are two more interesting details that I've seen around the Alfa Romeo. So the first one is that they have a very, very big shark fin. So Alfa Romeo is usually one of the teams that has the bigger shark fins over the last couple of years. But what this tells me, and this when combined with the renders that we already saw from the Haas that had a very, very small cooling inlet, tells me that actually the Ferrari power unit is probably going to be very, very tiny and very, very well packaged by both teams. So in order to have such a big, uh, shark fin right here at the back. I think that Alfa Romeo really packaged their Ferrari design very well, but unlike some other teams, Alfa Romeo actually reached some kind of a compromise. So if you look at this picture right here, you can see that the Alfa Romeo actually doesn't have as big an airbox as the Williams, for example, but they have a very, very big side pods opening, especially when compared to teams that are running the Ferrari power units, such as the Haas. So you can see that their side pod opening is much much bigger and especially from this angle right here you can see that their side pod opening is much much bigger than the Haas was so this probably means that they're trying to maximize the cooling from the from the side pod here now this also tells me that they are not using a lot of the air from the air box on the top to cool the engine and that most of the engine cooling is being made through this massive side pod opening and that most of the air that's coming through to this air box is actually being used in order to feed the, the engine directly with air for the combustion process and not to cool the car. So this is how they managed to get away with such a big shark fin when compared to the other teams. And finally, talking about this front section of the car right here, there are two very interesting details. So here in this top part of the wheel strikes, you can see that Alfa Romeo has actually made a cut in the wheel strikes and you can see it better in this picture right here. And this is very interesting because we haven't seen actually any of the teams show any difference in this part of the car. So it almost looked like this part was a spec part and Alfa Romeo has actually put a cut in this part of the car. And what this will probably help them to do is control the wake of the wheel better because with a cut right here, it's almost as they had two surfaces on top of the wheel instead of one. But I'm very interested to see if other teams follow this strategy. But coming into their front wing, a little bit like the Williams and less like other teams like Aston Martin and McLaren, 
Alfa Romeo is also loading this inboard part of the front wing a lot when compared to other teams and this is a very interesting design because again instead of trying to use the air to direct to the Venturi tunnels they are trying to use the air in order to generate downforce in this part of the wing right here but unlike Williams which has a very very low front wing uh, Alfa Romeo actually raised their front wing and this means that the clean air to the Venturi tunnels can actually be fed from the bottom part of the front wing. So if you look at cars like the Aston Martin, they have a very very raised up section in the front wing and this is how they are feeding the air to the Venturi tunnels, whereas some other cars like the McLaren have a much much lower front wing but then they have this inboard element unloaded and most of the downforce will be produced through this section right here in order for the clean air to go to the Venturi tunnels via this opening right here. So we again we are seeing a lot of very very interesting designs with these 2022 cars and when it comes to technical regulations we are already seeing a lot of difference between the different cars and the cars are definitely not looking anything like each other and if you just look here at the Alfa Romeo and then go back to the Williams you see that the cars actually look nothing like each other so this will definitely Definitely be one of the more interesting years in Formula 1 history to analyze the technical aspects of these cars so that's why I'm loving this car launch season so much. But if you enjoyed my analysis of both of these cars I will also have analysis on every single car that's been launched so far in this launch season and every car that's going to be launched in this playlist right here so check it out if you want to learn more about the 2022 cars. But in the meantime that's been it for this video I really hope you guys enjoyed my technical analysis of both cars and if you did please don't forget to like and subscribe it really helps out the channel a lot and I will see you again tomorrow for the Ferrari launch and until then goodbye